Welcome to the Manga and Libraries webinar series. Tonight's topic, Manga and Libraries Social Emotional Learning. Experts will discuss how manga can support the social emotional development of teens, finding community, titles for collection development, and more. These webinars are sponsored by the New York City School Librarians Association and the American Library Association's Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable. I'm Jillian Rudis, a 6th through 12th grade school librarian in New York City and the Japanese Culture and Manga Special Collections Librarian for the New York City Department of Ed. Hello, I'm Dustin Hensley from uh, Tennessee. I am a, a high school librarian and I have been a high school librarian for seven years. Hey, I'm Joe Pasculo. I work for the uh, New York Public Library in Midtown. I also write some reviews for Library Journal and School Library Journal. How's it going, everybody? I'm Mark DeVera. I am the Sales and Marketing Director at Yen Press here in Yen Press, where I am doing this recording from. I've worked in the, in the manga industry for, for over a decade. Uh, effectively my entire professional life and have been a fan for, for much longer than that. So really happy to be here to talk to you all. Good evening, everyone. My name is Renee Scott. I am also a young adult librarian for the New York Public Library in Washington Heights. I have a review blog called The Library Lady of NYC Reviews. And we're also joined by my kitty, Bella, who has seen me watch a lot of anime and read a lot of manga. Hi, I'm Tiffany Colson, and I'm a public librarian out here in Washington State in a small um, rural public library that networks with 30 others. So my manga collection is scattered across five counties. And then my side hustle is working for um, an after school nonprofit that um, designing um, educational enrichment for kids K through 12. And um, so I, I do research, I uh, help write grants and um, have a lot of time to be creative about th those kinds of things that, that we use to, to enrich learning for kids. Well, thank you everybody for joining the conversation. Before we start, I just wanna share a definition of social emotional learning, just so that we're all starting from the same place. So social emotional learning allows people to develop their identities, express empathy, manage emotions, make healthy choices, and build supportive interpersonal relationships. Unfortunately, many of our teens spent the past year and a half without access to the communities and the safe spaces that usually help to support their social emotional development. But I do believe that many of them still had access to manga and anime, which I think in our absence did help to build their social emotional development. So my question is, we think of manga usually as a form of entertainment, as a chance to learn about Japanese culture and an opportunity to build literacy skills, but how can manga also be a support system for the social emotional development of teens? I guess I can jump in, um, especially for me and my teens that I serve, it's just a great escapism because let's face it, reality sucks sometimes, especially it's hard being a teen. So they go through so many issues that certain that they're not getting from other books. So they have it visualized and they see the same issues that they're going through and they can relate to it. And it's like, this is like a great break for manga to, and especially with manga being geared towards young adults they get all the related relatable stories, even like tips on how they handle situations, even if some of them are very over-exaggerated. But, and it also gives them a comfort zone that they might not get anywhere else. I guess uh, I'll go ahead and, and jump in. So, so when I, I have, I kind of have two answers for this, but one personal one and one that's a bit more general. So, so when I, when I, you know, when I hear this question about, uh, you know, about manga being used as a, as a means to develop a social emotional 
skills. Uh, I think of how it affected me when I, when I entered high school. So if you take middle school Mark Devera, uh, he got into a lot of fights <laughs> with his peers. And if you take a look at uh, Mark Devera, who graduated from high school, much, much less fighting. In fact, probably very well known as a, as a pretty nice guy, all things considered. And uh, when I look back at that time, I think one turning point for me was actually reading reading One Piece. And you know, right from the first chapter, uh, there there's this. Uh, you know, I'm not giving spoilers. It's the first chapter, but <laughs> there's a, a. You know, you have Luffy as a as a kid, and he you know he looks up to to Shanks as this really strong pirate. But then one day these these mountain bandits come in and sort of make a fool out of Shanks. And, you know, young Luffy is, is mad. He's like, I thought you were strong. You, you could, why didn't you fight him? And then, you know, Shanks said something along the lines of like, it's, it's not, it's not worth doing. You know, why, you know, why, why should I get into this fight? I could just let it go. You know, he made a fool of me, but I don't, I don't really care. And then later on in the chapter, Luffy gets into trouble with the mountain bandits and then Shanks at that point goes in and fights. So you you see that he could have started a fight the whole time. He could have won right there from the start if he was a more prideful character. And that chapter, uh, you know, that volume of manga was one that I read over and over again at the time. And I think that chapter resonated with me. And I thought about that and I thought about uh, how it's best to let pride go, go to the side. And, and it was actually the small chapter uh, from a series where I don't think people would typically think of that as this, this you know, this series that develops these, these sort of life and social skills, but yet it had a big, big impact on me and, and for the better. So that's a personal story for how it has affected the, the social emotional development in my life. To speak of it in a more general sense, it's, it develops that as well as any stories can, you know, and I think for anybody here, anybody who's watching this, I think we all know about the power of stories and how it's affected us and it's affected us for the better. It made us understand other people, uh, people better, you know, uh, and of course that uh, will apply to manga as, and it, as it pertains to teens. I think at this point, most people have subscribed to the idea that young adult fiction does great things for, you know, introducing new perspectives and developing social emotional skills. And when you look at the vast majority of manga that is popular, a lot of it is effectively YA. So as such, when you have these teen characters going through teen experiences, whether in the fantasy world or a more realistic high school, they're going through, they're going through similar issues that teens are. And, and developing, um, you know, through the the stories that they read in in manga. So, so yeah, it's it's a very effective means of, of developing these life skills. Yeah, I love I love what Mark mentioned about that idea of self regulation that he learned from Luffy. Um, and I have a very similar story that uh, middle school Dustin was also quite the scrapper, um, and I. I got my uh, manga fix through Roroni Kenshin. Um, I, I don't know if everyone knows Roroni Kenshin, not a little bit older manga series from the 90s, but uh, it's a wandering samurai who at one point was a manslayer. So he was contracted to kill and then he uh, no, uh, rejects that lifestyle and uses a sword that's reverse bladed. So it will not cut people, it will only like uh, harm them. So like, he was out for peace. And that really affected me and reading Roroni Kenshin multiple times over. Um, so just like Mark, I, <clears throat> I threw a shonen um, manga that usually you just think of action and fighting. I was also able to find that idea of self-regulation and that um, like good decision making. Like, am I fighting for the right reason? Am I using my um, resources to help other people? Um, and you see that in a lot of shonen. Um, after like my Roni Kenshin phase, I got into Bleach, and the main character Ichigo also is a fighter who wants to start using what he's doing to help people instead of hurting people. So I think that's something that you see for a lot of young boys uh, and teenage boys as well uh, in these shonen, more action anim or anime and manga, um, the, the idea of doing it for the right reason and self-regulation. Yeah, I think they're just uh, the right titles put in the classroom can act as, you know, tools to promote uh, social emotional skills, uh, working together, being nice with, you know, 
being kind, being nice, uh, understanding struggles that other folks go through, you know, it really uh, brings down barriers between different classes of kids for sure. So um, I know Renee and I are going to talk a little bit more in the uh, in the webinar about a panel we were on uh, at both New York Comic Con and Anime NYC uh, about you know talking about the right titles and recommending the proper titles to uh, kids. That's very important, I think, in the classroom environment. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, they can act as you know tools to uh, promote these proper skills that we want to instill in children today. Yeah. I don't want to riff off what Joe said about, you know, those connections that happen between kids. So it's not just personalizing um, actions of the characters in manga, but it's also those connections that happen with kids from diverse backgrounds who ordinarily maybe wouldn't have anything in common. And all of a sudden they're meeting in, you know, in the library and I mean, or Barnes and Noble or wherever and having these conversations that definitely um, that's a social emotional learning skill that that you really couldn't um, you couldn't create that and and it's happening naturally so. yeah i'll definitely agree with that that i've noticed in my library that manga is the great equalizer that no matter what social group you belong to there is someone from that group that reads manga um, whether it be the athletes or whoever, um, every group has manga readers and they come together uh, because of their shared love of manga. And it's so fun to watch that take place in such, like Tiffany said, in such a natural and authentic way. Absolutely. And I think uh, also these different groups all deal with different kinds of problems that, you know, one may not deal with, but one does. And with this uh, tool, manga, brings people together. And uh, I think just it's kind of natural, like you said, uh, they become, they, they come together and they become one. And um, it does, you know, break down these walls that may be there. Uh, so I think it's just a, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful medium that really brings folks together. And uh, at the same time, you know, promotes social, emotional learning, uh, almost like secondary in a way, in a way. I'm just gonna jump in on that too, especially with mangas now, we're seeing more representation, which is really wonderful to see, not just like, all right, not just like typical high school dramas, but we're seeing mental wellness, we're seeing race representation finally, which I mean, I'll, I'm gonna admit, talk about this a little bit later, that it wasn't always, kind but now we're seeing mangas representing different cultures different backgrounds it's it's like really refreshing to see and just teams especially teams who are not from japan are like i'm seeing someone that looks like me going through what i'm going through in this book it's really wonderful to see yeah i think it's just a great way to bring different perspectives to you know folks that don't ordinarily experience those perspectives. Uh, it's a good way to make people aware that uh, you know folks do struggle with things that maybe I wouldn't struggle with, but someone else is. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome, thank you so much for that conversation. And I think it will lead us into our next question, which is for Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany, can you give us a better understanding of Castle? and how it relates to social emotional learning, teens, and manga? So um, that was a great introductory question because it leads right into um, what we're gonna talk about with um, the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning, which is casel.org. You can um, look up all kinds of information about social emotional learning there. And um, the, the Castle 5, um, is what I wanted to, I just kind of made a laundry list um, so that we can be aware of what those are. And, and as, as I kind of read through the laundry list, you might think about, you know, characters that act out these skills and we've already kind of introduced some of them. But the first one is social awareness. And that means empathy, appreciating diversity and respect for others. Um, the next one is self-awareness, which is identifying motions, recognizing strengths and self-confidence. Um, the third is responsible decision making, which means identifying problems, reflecting, and ethical responsibility. Then self management, which is everything from stress management to self discipline and self motivation. 
And then finally, relationship skills. And I honestly could not water down <laughs> this um, list because it sounds, it sounds really self-contained. Relationship skills, we know what that is. But let me just kind of mention some of the things that Castle lists. Um, communicating effectively, developing positive relationships, demonstrating cultural competency, practicing teamwork, resolving conflicts constructively, resisting negative social pressure, um, seeking or offering support and help when needed and standing up for the rights of others um, is all goes under relationship skills. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is a lot of times people stop there and don't really go the next level. Um, they mention the fact that culturally responsive SEL is, is paramount to the use of social and emotional learning anywhere, but particularly among um, populations of students that are culturally and linguistically diverse. And NYU's Metropolitan Center for Research on Equity and the Transformation of Schools um, talks about the fact that culturally responsive SEL means multiple expressions of diversity are recognized and regarded as assets for learning and that education should be resp responsive to students' individual and collective lived experiences. I love that because that starts to kind of address this collective lived experience um, that students have had, I think, during the pandemic, watching anime and becoming really immersed in manga culture um, through technology. Um, so again, I just, I took that wonderful, um, definition from NYU and maybe we can put the link um, in your document, but um, it does the following. I want to mention these three things because I think it will be a springboard for a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight. So when it makes education accessible to students and definitely that strong visual narrative really broadens the horizons of, of who can participate in that literacy space, whether it's someone just learning English or whether it's someone who struggles with reading or whether it's an you know, AP college bound, you know, um, brilliant person who just can't get enough manga. Um, so the second thing is it develops students' abilities to connect across cultures. And we mentioned that, that idea that pop culture really um, allows students of diverse backgrounds to connect. And then finally, and this is the one that, that really stood out to me, it contributes to an individual's engagement, learning, growth, and achievement through the cultivation of meaningfully relevant conversations, activities, and engagements. So if we take NYU's definition of what culturally responsive social emotional learning means, I just kind of put it together and this is what I think it means that manga opens doors to relevant conversations that contribute to student engagement, learning and growth. So that's um, that's kind of the background for social emotional learning and kind of where manga sits, not only the content, but also the process and what what students get from participating. Tiffany, that was amazing. Thank you. I'm like, and the webinar is done. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you for making those connections because we are having this conversation about social emotional learning and we may think we know what that means, but you really helped us to understand what it's really saying about kids and then connecting it to Mongo. And just like another reason why we need to give readers access to Mongo because it is so much more than the things that we think it is, right? Oh, they learned about Japanese culture. Oh, it's these action series. Oh, it's this romance. It's just well, and oh, so yes. I, I I work in a in a um, community that's ninety five percent Hispanic, and so would you think that um, you know engagement with manga would that be culturally responsive? And most people would go, oh, culture, Japan you know, Mexico, South America, is that culturally responsive? And, and from those definitions, it really helps you to see those connections and why with culturally and linguistically diverse students, we really need these kinds of um, resources to, to engage um, student communities in social emotional learning. Thank I love you. that point you just made, Tiffany, because I live in a community that's 95% white. So, for most of my students, they've only seen other white people and being able to engage with something from a different culture and being able to see the lives of people in Japan. Uh, I think that's really big for them to just have an experience of this is what life is like for other people. That's not just here in our white collective. Awesome, thank you for adding to that, Dustin. So um, it's not just the manga itself that teens are drawn to. What other aspects of this fandom engages teens? 
I, I think beyond the art and the, you know, the narratives kind of like, you know, Tiffany and Dustin alluded to, uh, it, it is the, uh, allure of the Japanese culture, you know, and finding out there's just so much more than what's here. There's a whole, you know, world out there to explore. And I think, um, manga is sort of a window into that, uh, you know, what happens in Japan. I, I'll give an example, uh, the anime slash manga uh, Chihaya Furu, where they play the, the card game uh, Karata. I would have never known about, you know, anything like that. It's not probably not even the most popular thing over in Japan, but it's something that I learned, you know, while reading a manga or watching an anime. And what, you know, what happens is it's a, it's a card game where the players memorize these poems and there is a, a reader and the reader draws from a deck you know the two players sit across from one another with all the cards uh you know kind of laid out on the floor they wear traditional japanese clothing and uh the reader draws a card and reads it aloud and within the first couple of syllables the the players have to identify okay this is the right poem this is the poem they're going to read we have to slap this card away it's you know that's obviously more involved than than what i'm uh you know rambling about now but uh the, the point of the matter is it's kind of an additional benefit to manga it opens doors to um you know japanese culture i, I think um i was talking to a teacher once who was part of a manga club you know he ran it and the kids got so much so interested in you know japanese culture the next thing you know there's a japanese culture club where it goes beyond manga so i think it is um it, it does go beyond the manga itself, you know, not just the stories or the, you know, the, the panels, arts, it's what's out there in the world. And um, that's, that happened to me for sure. You know, I, I started reading manga and then I got more and more interested in Japan itself. So yeah, I think that's something uh, that absolutely teens are interested in. It's so much you know different than what we have here. It's just, just so interesting. Uh, absolutely. I think there's an appeal to it. Uh, in terms of what draws a lot of teens towards manga, I think one, one of the, the most important ones and one of the most fun aspects of, of manga and anime is, of course, the, the community. And what leads into that is actually, actually ties in very well with the, with the theme that we're discussing of social emotional development. One of the great things about manga and anime is that it tells a, a long story. So you get to be with these characters who, uh, you know, who are trying to overcome obstacles, who are, uh, you know, ad addressing challenges in, in the ways that, you know, superheroes might in movies. But when you have a longer story, you're with these characters through a journey. And often these journeys involve making friends and overcoming these obstacles with your friends. Uh, and that, that's reflected uh, very much with a lot of the most popular series you can think of. You know, when you think of Naruto, when you think of Attack on Titan, you think about a bunch of young characters you know who team up a <laughs> nice team up to to overcome come some obstacles and then you see that not only reflected within the stories but with the fans who also enjoy them i think you know it's uh uh naturally you found a lot of these these fans these readers of manga who who you know enjoy these communities that they're reading within the stories but also uh find that they find those communities in in real life so i would say that uh, it, it is a very big part of the appeal of, of manga. Of course, like anything, it can be an isolated activity where, you know, somebody, I just read the books and I don't necessarily need the community. But looking through the course of, of this medium's popularity in our territory, you know, anime clubs existed before I was in high school. They existed while I was in high school and they exist stronger than ever right now. So there, there is something there. It is very clear that these fans love the fact that community comes from a love of this medium. And I think that is a big part of why it's so popular and its appeal. But one more thing that I also want to bring up is that uh, manga and fans are a very creative bunch. You know, I, I, there's there's been comic books forever. There's fine art that's been out there. But I feel that what's made kids, you know, in America want to pick up a pencil and start drawing more than anything else is manga and, and anime. <laughs> Sorry to all the, the AP studio art teachers, but you know, who had to deal, deal with manga kids for so long, but the ones who are really inspired to, to draw and get better are the, 
the manga and anime kids who are on deviant art and now on you know on instagram getting tons of followers you know within within high school uh I realize it might, as as a representative of manga and anime, it might be a little arrogant for me to say we've got the most creative kids. But I kind of I kind of believe that to be the case. So that uh, also is another fun appeal for manga. I have to say also that I appreciate what you just said, Mark, about um, the idea that their pers that the kids have to persist in their in their interest over this really long um, multiple volume narratives that are very, very long, um, which goes really counter to what the assumption is by a lot of educators about what it means when a kid is reading manga that, oh, you know, they're just lazy, they just want to read a short narrative, they don't really want to engage with something, you're like, it's a total opposite. <laughs> they really have to have that interest, persistence, they have to remember the themes and the arcs and everything, and much more even than, you know, a 500 Lux IO um, YA novel, right? I also want to add, along with like inspiring our, especially our manga readers with like picking up a pencil and drawing their own, what about the cosplay that they create? That's another inspiration. I have seen teens create such beautiful like cosplay of their favorite characters at, that they learn to make themselves. I was like, that is also amazing. It's like, you can gain something from that. It's like, this is something I am so, like, this reflects who I am. This is something I want to do. Maybe it could lead them to a future career in fashion that you got, like, future fashion designers in the works and are taking inspiration from their favorite manga and stories. I actually had a teen who created this full kind of furry anime character and she did it herself. I watched her create it from dollar store gloves and all the foam and fake fur. And she was creating this in my library. And I was like, you are doing this. And she's only 13. That is, a, it's like, and she's like, this is from one of my favorite manga, Spice and Wolf. I'm like, first of all, she shouldn't be reading it, but <laughs> I'm like, she's mature. I'm like, good for you. But the fact that she just found such inspiration, it's like, I want to create this myself. That is just like the power influence that manga has. Yeah, one of my um, proudest achievements uh, on the teacher side of being a librarian is getting to use manga in the classroom with a student. Um, I had a student that was uh, in trouble on a very regular basis, um, and he was in a course. I'm not sure how he ended up in my class. But he was in a course in which uh, students had to go in the community and find a community partner and um, do a project with them. And he was having a very difficult time. Um, he, he had a lot of home issues. It was just him and his mother and um, had a lot of issues with other students at the school. And I give him what I believe to be one of the greatest pieces of art and storytelling ever, Full Metal Alchemist. And um, just the idea of Ed and Al only having each other and then how they grew their network um, and the importance of them gaining friends to their whole journey and that being the reason they were able to be successful is all these friends they create uh, even though it's still like those two are doing it for each other but then they have all this giant network of people that they love and have support from and that helped him so much that after reading the series um, and going through the class he was in at one point he was in the principal's office once per week and his last year of high school he was in the principal's office zero times that that was the power of just a manga series of him seeing that i can I, just because of my circumstances i can still do something if i try to build these relationships with people um and just seeing that happen in front of me because of manga was so beautiful No, not to plug another manga and libraries webinar, but this is the webinar series. Uh, we had a webinar that was titled Manga and Anime Programming. So if you're interested in learning more about bringing... Yeah, Renee, were you in that one? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, so if you're interested in learning more about bringing anime and manga programming to your communities, uh, you could check out that webinar. It is on the manga and libraries.com website. 
So thank you. So Mark, I know you told us a little bit about yourself in the beginning introductions, but I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about you and your professional relationship to manga. Oh, sure. You know, I have I have the coolest job in the world, or at least one of the coolest jobs in the world. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, since, you know, since pretty close to when I graduated out of college, my, my job has been uh, promoting manga in one way or another. You know, for much of my career, it was in a sales capacity. So, you know, uh, talking to stores, talking to people who get books into stores, uh, and uh, and of course libraries too. You know, I, I got I got my teeth cut doing a lot of library webinars and attending um, American Library Association annual. Uh, got a, a lot of interesting questions and uh, um, had a lot of fun. You know, talking about talking about books that I I enjoyed. Uh, and since coming into Yen Press, you know, in the in the role of sales and marketing director, I have I now have marketing under my purview. Previously, uh, I, I prior to working at Yen Press, I worked at Viz media for about about nine years uh, and I, I had I dabbled in marketing there you know I'd host panels and stuff like that but it's not to the degree that I work with marketing here at Yen Press and that's one of the things I love about the job most is that through what I do on the marketing side I get to interact with fans on our social media I get to talk to people who love our books and are happy to see our books happy to see what we're, we're coming out with um, and, and through the course of being in this industry have met a lot of other people who are just as passionate for manga and graphic novels as, as I am. So at this point, a lot of my best friends are, are uh, others who are professionals in this industry. So I guess that's the sort of summary of, of my relationship to manga in a professional sense. Yeah, and I know you presented at Anime NYC. I was at the one of the panels where you released. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, Thanks you talked about some of the new titles that were coming out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. I love I love the live programming. I'm so happy that conventions are are back. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, I, you know, like I said, I, I I enjoy interacting with fans on social media, but it's that much more fun to do it in a in a live setting. And what's nice too is that. You know, outside of conventions, it's mostly I and my team who get the satisfaction of that interaction on social media. What's cool about conventions is uh, we can't do it all ourselves, so we need the help of other Yen Press staff, uh, in particular editors, to come and work the booth. So I love the fact that these editors who spend so much time working on manga and light novels get to see the fans who enjoy it, you know, live and get to talk to those fans live. You know, it, it, when you're when you're at home and you're like sort of nose to the grindstone, you it's it's very easy to not know how much of an impact you're making and how happy you're making people feel. So for the editors to see that live is really satisfying. Yeah, and we had two other people here also present at Anime NYC and New York Comic Con, Renee and Joe. So I know you presented a panel team talk through manga. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about this panel and how it connects to the social emotional learning of teens. Jill, would you like me to go ahead or? Are you go? Yeah, yeah, no, go, uh, go right ahead. It's your, it's your baby. Yeah, you should, you <laughs> should talk about it for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, I was actually working on this proposal for two years. Um, I am a lifelong anime and manga fan ever since Dragon Ball Z actually came to US shore. So yeah, I'm telling my age here. Um, <laughs> and being working so close with teens who love anime and manga, especially with my branch, they were really afraid to show their fandom because they got bullied for it. They, there's still bullying that happens. Even their parents don't understand why they like manga or anime so much like what's the point of this where are you learning from it and and of course me being like one of the manga librarians along with joe um we just brought our heads together like you know we should do something like to create like bridge that gap so parents can understand our teens why they love it take an interest in it and also for a teens to have a safe space to express their love for this and especially for my area and also from personal experience as a teen and being a teen of color it's like i said it's hard being a teen 
imagine it as being a teen of color who's also an LGBTQIA teen. That, that's a lot of pressure and trying to find a place to belong within that community too. Even some of my teens today, I uh, haven't for, it was, this was like another one that really spurred me to action was told because she was getting a cosplay ready. And I was like, this looks beautiful. And she looks so sad. And I was like, why do you look so sad? She said, I was told that this particular character, I was going to make ugly because I'm black, which is the worst thing you can ever say. And, and unfortunately, that still happens, even with adults. I mean, I actually recently had a hate message for a cosplay I did. And I was like, you know what? We're in 2021. And this also when I was developing this with Joe, it was 2020. And so much, especially systemic racism was happening. I'm like, you know, we got to work on this more. And knowing that Joe also is a fan of anime and manga, like myself, and he had an amazing podcast that I will listen to and take inspiration. I'm like, listen, like my teens need to listen to what he's sharing and the titles that they might like. And so I, I recruited him. I was like, you know, let's bring this together, write this proposal, mention titles, which we'll talk about later that can really help bridge that gap, show that you can find so many connections to what teens face. And even with cultural representation, bigotry, like dealing with sexism and like depression, abuse, trauma, everything is so relatable and they can find a way to like, this is where they can find, like this is their story. It's not just a Japanese story. This is a story that every team goes through. So we pitched that panel and the rest was history. And we even had at our last Anime NYC, a, a bully team reach out to us. And I hope they're doing extremely well because they have faced discrimination and stereotypes. And I'm like, and I know what it's like being stereotyped and looked down upon and letting them know like, you're, we're here for you. This is our job as librarians to create a safe space to provide the literature, the literature that you need and to make sure that you get what you need that, makes, that helps you express who you are. Yeah, I think um, I think Renee did a great job summing it up. I don't think there's a whole ton I can really add, um, but I think one of the main purposes of that particular panel was to talk about what um, librarians like you know Jillian and Renee and myself you know offer kids on a daily basis. It's you know it's in our job description. Uh, you know, more or less, it's like librarianship 101. Um, we want to help teens deal with the issues that they face, because like Renee said, it's difficult to be a teen. I think that's the hardest age, uh, frankly. I, I do think things get better and easier in some ways as you get older, but as a teen, you know, you've only got so much power at your disposal, um, you know, what you're able to do, what you're able to deal with. And sometimes it feels like uh, life is really throwing a lot your way, uh, you know, be it bullying or, you know, acceptance like Renee was talking about just now, um, racism. So teens deal with a lot of issues. And I, I don't think teens at that age really have the tools or the wherewithal to know how to deal with these issues. And if manga can be, uh, you know, an escape, if manga can act as a, a good role model in a way, you know, by showing kids and teens, hey, you know, this is normal stuff and there are good people out there in these stories and in real life that uh, can help you, you know, overcome these problems. Uh, Renee put together really great slideshows for both uh, conventions. Um, you kind of split them into different uh, issues that teens deal with, such as cultural representation. Um, I remember the, uh, the neurodiversity. Uh, that was a big one. Um, social issues, you know, bullying and, on each of these slides were uh, different titles that show positive manga characters and manga storylines that you know deal with these uh, issues that teens face day in and day out, and show them that hey, you know there are ways to cope with these issues. And yeah, like she said, the rest was history. I think um, people really received the panels really well at both uh, conventions, and um, that. Teen really felt comfortable enough to 
reveal she, she was pretty revealing in uh during the q a you know she talked about how she goes to therapy and how kids try to get her involved in drama and i uh, my heart broke for her a little bit and it was a very real moment you know that teens deal with stuff and um if we can promote you know social emotional skills and social emotional learning and you know, it's it's good to start early with those things, I believe. And um, if manga can help in that regard, and all the better, you know, I, all the better to put them in classrooms and, uh, you know, make them part of, you know, the core, so to speak. So yeah, absolutely. It was a, it was a fun panel to do. Absolutely. What well, one of the things, so listening to this, I just, I, I love everything that you've said. Um, I have a small library and near my, you know, seeing all of that interaction and those important conversations and teen topics, I cleared off four shelves um, near my manga section where I have a, a bookstore style display of teen topics, everything from LGBTQ um, plus families to this is your brain on stereotypes. Um, and, and that bookstore type display um, remains um, rotating different kinds of information so that kids can make those connections. You know, they're having those conversations, they're reading manga, but having the um, additional information space really cl in close proximity to the manga um, has proven to be really effective. A lot of times I'll have kids checking out a stack of manga and on the bottom, you know, it'll be like 101 ways to cope with teen anxiety. Um, sometimes I'll have kids ask me, can I, can I get a bag for my books? My mom's waiting in the car and I don't want her to know what I'm checking out. And it's not the manga, it's the other things that they've slid underneath. So I'd really advocate for, you know, making those spaces, those physical spaces in your library where those information connections for social emotional learning can happen um, organically. I love that idea. And I was actually at Renee and Joe's. Oh, I moderated the panel. I'm like, I was at that panel. <laughs> and I remember, you know, I remember what it was like to be a teen and what I was going through. But I think sometimes we forget what it's really like to be a teen. And just that teen who did share out in front of the whole entire audience. It's like in that moment, you really remember how heavy life feels and is as a teen. And Tiffany, I love that idea of bringing some of those titles that are hidden away in the stacks, in the Dewey Decimal section that kids don't understand and don't want to use, and pulling them out and bringing it next to the, the titles that are supporting them for that additional support. Because sometimes in manga, the issues or the challenges that the characters are facing aren't always resolved ever or yet in the story. So I think that having those extra resources available for teens while they're going through a series or trying new series is really helpful. So thank you for sharing that tip. Uh, so before we get to book recommendations, any final thoughts from the panelists about social emotional learning and manga? Oh, okay. so best part of the webinar, I saved some good time. I usually like don't manage the time too well at the end. So we do have 10, maybe 12, 13 minutes to share some titles that we would all like to recommend to librarians, educators, and teens. Uh, so I'll just ask the specific question. Do you have any recommendations for manga that supports the social emotional development of teens? And could you tell us a little bit about that manga? R Renee held up a book. I feel like Renee's got to go. Got to go first. All right. I'm just gonna tell you. I will talk about Comey can't communicate until the day I die. <laughs> I. This was actually what started Teen Talk through manga. It was Comey because we have someone with social anxiety. I was Comey as a teenager with social anxiety. I was pretty much mute and had trouble connecting with other people. And about a girl who has, she has social anxiety, she wants to make 100 friends and her first friend notices that she has trouble talking and is so patient and wonderful to her. This is a great story about friendship. And I am currently awaiting volume 16, so I will be buying that. 
I, I actually, just to show how much I have loved the series, this is my entire collection, <laughs> but we can't communicate. When it comes out, I buy it. <laughs> and I can't recommend, I mean, it's so wonderful. And now that the anime is out and I'm happy that it's getting the love that it's getting. And, and I love that if each beginning of each episode, it says when someone has social anxiety, they do want to connect with other people. They just have, they struggle with it. If they have a hard time with it. So it's just a reminder to be patient with people because you don't know what they're going through. All right, uh, I, I, I kind of want to go next because this, this is a good title to present uh, right after somebody presented Come and Can't Communicate. Uh, and and I, I actually have to say, I, I, there's, there's three titles I recommend. I promise to go through them as fast as I can. So I have Horimiya over here. And much like Komi Can't Communicate, Horimiya is a manga that has to do with, with making friends. You know, our, our two main characters start off as a bit of outcasts, but not only that, they, they're outcasts who kind of have a wall in front of them and are kind of putting on a face and through the course of the story, uh, make friends and become more comfortable in themselves and, and get to understand other people better. So much like, like I said, much like Komi Can't Communicate the, about these characters, expanding their friend group and, and growing from it. And this is currently one of the most popular manga out there. So it's great that one of the most popular manga, which grew in popularity because it was adapted into one of the most popular anime this year, has such great lessons to learn for, within its pages. The other one I wanna show is Sex Ed 120%. So, you know, as the name indicates, much of this book has to do with, with sexual education. It has to do with this teacher who's like, I think the sexual education landscape is terrible. So I'm gonna turn it up 120%. So needless to say, it's a manga that, that teaches sex education, but also in, in ways that people might not expect. For example, it teaches about sex education in regards to um, uh, to to those who are who are gay, and it also approaches like how do you um, you know not to jump to conclusions based on what what somebody's saying. Like there's a character who asks a question which indicates that she might be gay, but the teacher doesn't jump to that conclusion, which is kind of a good good lesson for how to talk about a lot of these things um, things nowadays. And and also it it goes into topics such as body positivity and, and whatnot. So there's there's a lot of really great things to gain within the pages of sex ed 120% outside of the sexual education, which is pretty clear from the title. Uh, the third one, I don't have a copy of because it's not out yet. It's called Chitose is in the Ramane bottle, uh, uh, which is originally a light novel, which is releasing from us at Yen Press this coming February and is going to be published as a manga a little later on. We announced that we're doing it. We don't have an on sale date quite yet, but when it comes out, it should be, it should be quite the treat. There's definitely been a lot of fans who are waiting for it. And in essence, this is the story of uh, of a guy who's been a bit of a shut-in in high school. And as he comes back, uh, a teacher wants one of the popular kids, this popular boy to sort of sort of mentor him in a, in a sort of way. And, and I haven't read this, but from my research and my understanding of the story, it has a lot to do with this, this shut-in kid who used to have a cynical point of view of the world and a cynical point of view of what it meant to be popular. It has to do with him starting to to learn about people, you know, like his the, the popular kids, like, look, one of the reasons why I'm popular is and get along with people is because I understand people and I have to like learn things from their point of view, which is which is really interesting. When I think of a lot of the, the media I was exposed to growing up, uh, the popular kids are usually the, the bad guys and it's the one who's a bit of a shut and a, and a recluse who's sort of the, the hero and the one who should be understood. We're at a time now where it's clear that a lot of those uh, types of people who, who might have cynical points of view in the world lean into, into toxic lifestyles and toxic beliefs. And I can't help but feel if some of these people, like the character in the story, learning to look at things from other people's points of views and not have cynical views on, you know, on others, it's, it's kind of a really interesting lesson to learn. I, um, like I said, I still have yet to read this. I don't necessarily think this series is what's going to fix the alt-right or like, you know, red pill communities and that sort of thing. But I started off this conversation by talking about how this one chapter of One Piece, reading that chapter over and over again, made me a more understanding person. So for all I know, um, Chitose is in the Romney bottle will help 
others become and of this generation become more understanding people too. So definitely looking forward to that manga coming out. Um, I'm pretty excited, Mark, for New York, New York. I feel like that's going to be a pretty good social, um, emotional manga for adults. But um, for teens, I, I have to recommend Beastars. Um, I've talked about that a lot at uh, different panels. Um, you got a world, a school, you know, a school and a world that is uh, divided by uh, carnivores and herbivores that are uh, anthropomorphic. And at Cherryton Academy, there's really a lot of wariness when it comes to the carnivores after an herbivore is found uh, slaughtered. And our main character is a really, really reflective and uh, intellectual carnivore. He's not your typical, you know, beast who wants to, you know, eat all the herbivores because he's bigger and he's stronger. You know, he wants to understand why this has to be, why there has to be this tension, this um, almost stereotyping. And um, his name is Lagoshi. He is the big gray wolf. And I, I love that character. I think he's really intelligent. I think he really, really wants acceptance and he wants everyone to get along. He wants to break down those barriers between herbivores and um, car carnivores and herbivores. And um, on the other hand, you've got the uh, his love interest, Haru the White Rabbit, who is uh, slut shamed quite early on in the series. Uh, she is bullied for it. Uh, she's made fun of. She's talked about behind her back. And it's a manga where it does kind of portray the realities of, you know, what's happening in the world, but it also does show some positive role models in manga. And um, I, I love that series. So anytime I can, you know, give it a plug, I will. Yeah, uh, mine is a classic, it's Fruits Basket. Um, there's a ch all of the shonen talk I've had. Here comes uh, romance. Uh, with Fruits Basket, there's so much acceptance of people. And especially with the main character, um, her parents being deceased um, and being homeless and all the things that she goes through. But yeah, all of her kindness that she shows to everyone she meets regardless of how they take her the um, the kindness and acceptance she shows to them is such a beautiful picture of regardless of circumstances that just being kind to people can go so far um so i absolutely love that series and my students do as well and another one is love is hard for otaku um i another romance series um but it's, it's so much fun and it's probably the funniest manga that i've ever read um but the the characters all being otaku or nerds essentially um and having to hide it in their like professional life and then how they build friendships um with other people that have like um interests as they do and how they are able to help each other be more of who they are outside of just um their friend group uh, is another great one actually i, I kind of want to jump jump off of that so you know what, what i love about about Wurukoi, the you're talking about Wurukoi, of course right so what i love about Wurukoi, which takes place in in an office setting with characters who are older than high school is that in many ways it still kind of feels like a, a high school manga and a high school story and i've been out of high school for much longer than I'd like to admit, but in, in many ways, I feel like I'm still developing socially and emotionally too. I, I don't feel that different from who I was in high school in that regard. So it's kind of a fun reminder that a lot of this development continues into, into adulthood. And I think Wodakoi is a great example of a story where you see characters who are still, you know, like I said, very, it feels very much like a high school story. So I'm gonna kind of go a different totally different direction with my um, recommendation and part of social emotional learning is self management and organizing and um, this this manga you all need it in your library and um, it gets checked out all the time in my library and Marie Kondo rewrote her famous book as a manga I don't know if you've seen it the life changing manga of tidying up. And, and I throw it at teens all the time and they totally enjoy it because it's told as a story, but it, it um, shares her philosophy for um, cleaning and, and um, ridding yourself of things that you don't need, but it tells it in, in sort of a romance narrative. 
And, um, and, and I'm not really, it's almost like kind of sits the fence between being um, nonfiction and, and fiction. And it's just a different kind of manga that might introduce kids who usually don't read a manga narrative to um, that style and, and a topic that they can enjoy um, when it's in a manga style, so. I think when Mark shared uh, sex ed 120%, it reminded me of Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season. And while that manga isn't being like, they're not being taught by their teacher, like it's a bunch of girls that started a book club and one day in their book club, they're like, what do you want to do before you die? And they're like, have sex. And they're just like sex obsessed teenage girls. But like, I mean, they're going from like being young girls to being young adults. So it's natural for them to feel that way. But the story follows them as they on, on this journey and they talk about things like love and sex and attraction and relationships and romantic feelings and then more complex things like infatuation and love triangles. So I was just thinking of that when Mark brought up the other title. But another manga, I might have mentioned it in one of the other webinars, is The Golden Sheep. And The Golden Sheep, it's about a, a young girl she moved away from her childhood home because of family circumstances. And then she moved back when she was in high school, thinking that those childhood friends and her would be able to just reconnect and reseal that bond. But so much time has passed and so many personal journeys have occurred in that time period. And now they're dealing with not the fun lives of elementary school kids, but they're dealing with things like bullying, harassment, suicidal ideation, running away, sexual assault. And it's just really showing the different paths that these teenagers are taking as they're going through life. And she starts to see the cracks in the relationship. But I think the manga really allows readers to see their stories being told and maybe giving them the words to the things that they're experiencing that they don't really have the words for yet. And there is some solutions to some of the things that the teenagers are facing. So. That's a really good manga and it's short. So it's not like one piece that's forever. <laughs> uh, any last titles we want to recommend before we close out? I actually have one more and I would hate myself if I did not share this title. Um, for those who don't know, we just released our best books of 2021 for all ages. And I must talk about, yes, Joe, you knew what I was gonna go there. I was gonna go there, Boys from the Riot. This was unanimously voted yes by everyone on our committee. I was on the Best Books for Teens committee. And I did. I was so happy I did not have to fight for this book. And just that we have, every, like the majority of the staff, including the mangaka, are transgendered. So we're getting an authentic voice of Rio, a trans boy discovering and trying to establish his identity and through a, a help of friends, they established a street fashion line to help him express the person he genuinely is. And it's about acceptance, like it, we got LGBT issues that are relatable, no stereotyping, it's everything they face. This was, we could not stress enough how important this book is. And another manga that I absolutely love, and I was, I don't have a copy of it with me. And I was so excited that it was at the bookstore that I actually screamed and everyone saw me. It's called My Love Mix Up. And it's such a wholesome story about a boy discovering his feelings for another male classmate because he originally had a crush on his female best friend and all his all this happens because of a dropped eraser so he picks up her eraser sees a boy's name becomes crushed by like oh she likes this boy accidentally drops the eraser and the boy whose name is on it picks it up and thinks that our main character has a crush on him so when he's trying to like trying to clear up the understanding which leads to more mishaps and more funny situations he realizes maybe i do like this person and the twist at the end of volume one was so wonderful it's wholesome and the fact that everyone was rooting for each other to get their respective crushes you know he kept his hidden 
is so wholesome. And that's like stories that we need to see. It's like people supporting each other, even if it's not exactly what they think it is. So attached to the webinar, we will have a list of all the titles that we've recommended tonight and additional titles. And I will also add the list that Joe and Renee had made for the Teen Talk through manga. So that will be added. But a special thank you for Mark from Young Press. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and all of the experts for participating in this important conversation about social emotional learning, teens and manga. If you would like to view any of the previous Manga and Libraries webinars, you can visit mangaandlibraries.com. Our next webinar is Manga and Libraries, Manga 101. We're going back to the basics and information about that and registration information will come out in the new year. So thank you everybody for supporting Manga and Libraries and we'll see you in 2022. Have a good night.